Uh, Feidelberg is gallivanting out in <laughs> Lord knows where. Could be dead for all we know. Three uh, hours outside London. Uh, we'll see what happens to him. Uh, but I thought it was appropriate that I finally got some solo time. You know, we did the Kevin Clancy show for a while and mail time and then radio. And um, I haven't had a chance to just riff solo. And it's perfect that it comes at a time uh, after the Mets lost because I am crushed. Like, I was absolutely fucking devastated by that team. And I don't even think I knew it was coming. Like, I knew how how much, how important it was. And then when they lost the Atlanta series, uh, and then lost, like, the Atlanta series, I realized how upset I was. And then the, the, the playoffs, I just was emotionally, like, crushed. And it, it, this isn't going to be a big sports thing. Um, in some ways it is, but it, it applies to kind of everybody because... I realized that um, I, I, I think when you're a sports fan, you're you're a sports fan for more than just sports. Whether or not you realize it, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you're rooting for a team because you need it. You need a win in your life. You need a distraction in your life, or you know, it represents something more to you, or it's symbolic of something to you. And I I didn't realize until it was after the fact how much I felt like the Mets was like my life where it's like there's this team that has this reputation that everybody thinks a certain way about them and they're the butt of the joke and they get made fun of and they lose and they can't get the job done and they're this the loser rep you know and with everything that's gone on in my life that's been the last you know like five years for me has just been this one thing that everybody thinks about me and, you know, whether it's that or just the the reputation I have at Barstool and the winning and the losing and the money and the no money and the whatever, it's like there's – I just have this reputation and that just leads to constant jokes and, and, and trolling and that's just how it is. And then it's always been that way for the Mets and it's been that way for me in my life. And then the Mets start to do this thing where they're winning a fucking ton, a lot, all the time, almost every day, all week, every month, all season. And I was watching people be like, nah, nah, they're not good. And I was going fucking ballistic over it because I was like, what do you mean? Look at what they're doing. It's good. It's awesome. It's not perfect. There's some luck and there's some holes, but look. It's not like the years before. It's not the reputation that you always talk about. And it was still just LOL Mets. And I and I started I don't and again, I don't think I realized this until after they lost and I was just like emotionally wrecked that I made this connection that like I I felt like if that team finally won you break that reputation. You can't say anything anymore. There's there's total like Total proof, total uh, in uh, indisputable evidence of like, no, this is how it is. You're wrong. And then when they just fell short, it was like, ah, oh, no, they'll it'll just always be the same way. It'll just always be that reputation. And I and I felt like, you know, because there are so many times where we. Um, we're succeeding here at KFC Radio or we're doing, you know, great things for charity or we're doing great things with the new hires or whatever and we're doing all this good shit and there's just this, you know, thing from the past and this reputation that you can't shake and it doesn't matter what you, you're currently doing or showing until you can somehow prove, like, you know, the ultimate. And in sports... Luckily, there is this one defined, agreed upon thing. If you do this, then everyone else is wrong and you're right. And they lose and you win. And then there's nothing anybody can say. And I realize in life, there's nothing really like that. I mean, you know, there's certain things. Like you can go get a bunch of money or we can get certain rankings or levels or success, downloads, whatever. I'll probably always just have people who judge me for whatever they want to judge me for and, and stick you know, that reputation on me no matter what. But in some way, I think I was like, this team, and I really, 
throughout the year, I never once said to myself, like, wow, like I'm the Mets. The Mets are me. But until it was over. But I think somewhere probably inside it was like every time somebody said, you know, this team sucks, now they're about to lose it and they would go win, it was like, fuck you. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. You're dead wrong. And it felt so good every single time, whether it was that fat idiot Frank or Braves fans or Yankees fans or whatever. They would always say something, and I, would, I, we, the Mets, they would prove everybody wrong. And, um, you know, there's not, again, in the game of life, there's not as a set like, here's the game, and did you win or lose, and how many, what is your record? It's a lot more abstract than that as far as what you can achieve and not achieve and what do people respect and not respect and what do they think is good and bad and how do you build your reputation but there was this you know connection that I and I thought like you know what if finally this is the one where it all gets erased the jokes die the, the 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 reputation is dead there's no way to troll all the ammo and evidence is gone because like they proved everybody wrong and could show it and not only did that not happen it was the furthest thing from happening so it was like nope never mind your life is your life your reputation is your reputation and it's gonna just be this way until you fucking die so it was um it was something that i i mean again i was like I've been upset about sports teams in the past i remember like in 07 when the mets blew it i remember i was like devastated but people around me were like crying and really like went catatonic and i remember being like all right listen i'm upset but like let's let's pump the brakes here like this is just sports but it was cuz i was a 20 uh, 22 year old kid at the time not a care in the world i didn't need like sports didn't mean it's funny it's like when you're young you're into sports cuz you're just like a dummy right you're just like i don't know whatever i like sports and i feel like almost as i've gotten older i like less sports overall the general sports mean less to me but what does matter matters like way more to me deeply to me because it's just been that many more years that i put into it and that means you know there's something and and really like it, when when for baseball it's like an everyday thing that was there like when work was tough when shit with the kids is tough, when shit with the ex-wife is tough, when, you know, just growing old and your body and you're feeling sick and you're like, when everything else was bad, every, like almost every night the Mets would win. Like two out of three nights. You know, we won 101 games out of 162. It was like more often than not, I would end the night being like, fuck yeah. Like, and again, it's not that you accomplish anything, but you know, the team you vouch for or the, the thing you get into. I mean, in this world these days, whether it's politics, the, the party you root for, the guy you root for, the person you want to vote uh, in, or whether it's sports, whether it's your favorite fucking uh, influencer, whether it's your favorite reality star, you know, people, we like stake our reputations on them and like our, our, uh, our like personality and our, you know, everything is tied into that. And it, it's silly because it's just a game that, you know, we're talking about hitting a ball with a stick and running around touching square square bags but when you when, especially for us when it becomes you know like dave has said a million times like he's fucking around being an asshole being like well you know you've been replaced by frank as the mets guy and like you're wrong about the mets and he's right and then you have a thousand million people saying that and then you know you're you're you whether it whether or not it's a silly argument or the result of what you're talking about matters in the grand scheme of life or not you like stake your your worth on that and you go to bat for that and you fight to the death for that so it's almost like you know you know when they say i've used this example many times before when you're an adult and you got kids and bills and shit sucks you're like oh my god i'm so stressed and then you see like a high school senior or college senior who's like oh my god i've got midterms this week like i'm freaking out and you're like you don't even know stress. You don't even fucking know what stress means. And in the the big grand scheme, like, yeah, you're right. But in that moment, all they know 
and all they experience is like this test is really hard and this is the only thing that matters in my life and I have to do good and if I don't, my life is over. So to them, their brain and their heart and their emotions are probably kicking the same exact way you are. It's just they don't know about how fucking worse it's going to get, you know? And so in this world, it's like it's so silly to – to put your, you know, your, like I said, your whole personality in a way into the hands of these fucking random ass grown men making millions of dollars to play a game. But it becomes that way. And I think it becomes that way for a lot of people. But it re- I mean, it actually becomes that way when you work here or you work in sports where you're making predictions, you're making claims, you're fighting, you're arguing. And all of a sudden it doesn't just become like, D- did you get your prediction right? It becomes like, you know, it rep- you represent something like bigger and, and better. And I know how ridiculous this all sounds. And so this is why I really wanted to do this this monologue here is because there's this writer. Um, I don't know how to say his name. I think it's Mark Doty, D-O-T-Y. And he's this poet and a writer. Very, he, He's like the premier writer when it comes to dealing with loss and grieving. And um, he wrote about his dogs dying. And I didn't read the whole thing because I don't fuck reading. But, um, you know, he, he, he basically talks about these, these two main things that occur, these two, like, phenomenons that occur when you lose a pet. And it's like this double whammy of uh, – it's almost like this the idea of, like, inappropriate grief. That the, the first thing you will face is that people don't really think what you're going through is that big of a deal. If you don't have a dog and somebody's dog dies, you're like, oh, that's that's sad. But, like, come on. That's a fucking dog. You'll get another one. You'll be fine. Life goes on. What's the big deal? But I'm so sorry for your loss. You can say that to their face, but behind their back, you see someone, if they're, you know, crying and grieving and crushed, a lot of people are going to be like, okay, dude, it's just a pet. You know, how old was it really? Like, come on. Um, and then there's the second thing of even if you do, even if you do have a dog, and you do uh, identify, you rather quickly will move on, you know? Like, you'll, you'll be there maybe in the beginning. You, you can kind of relate and kind of understand, but you're like, yeah, okay, it's been a month, you know, get, get back to it. And so it's this idea of, you know, having this an inappropriate amount of grief for something that, you know, we have decided or uh, our, our, our society kind of deems not, that important or not worthy of like your tears or your sadness because it's like you know what things could be worse like like i said with the the kid taking the test like you, you know oh your dog died well you know no one in your family's dead you're you're not sick you've got health and wealth like what's the big deal i think that there there needs to be a poet that stands up and writes for it about sports because it's so silly but if you do watch it in a way if you're a casual fan and you're punching a hole in the wall or something or you lost your bet and you fucking punch a hole in the TV, it's like, all right, yeah, you're an overreacting asshole. But, you know, I talked to some of the guys here that we all all rooted for the Mets and, like, I can tell they're all kind of going through the same thing of, like, genuine heartbreak but knowing that that is silly, knowing that they can't, like, come to work and be – you know, if you're fucking, if you had a sibling who died or something, nobody expects you to go to work and, 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 you know, everyone would give you your space and your time. And of course this is not on that level, but it's like, there is some in between of like, well, it, this, this does fucking, it almost makes it hurt. Like there, there's more in a way because it's like, it hurts, but it shouldn't. I know this is dumb, but I can't stop the way that I'm feeling. So you need somebody to stand up for for like that side of things like looking at pavs this week i mean pavs was like uh uh he he, he's going through it for like the first time really like he lost (laughs) friends over this he's leaving his own home because of it he's like i gotta go home i gotta like retreat back to my house he is in a in a world of hurt that that's a whole different side of things when you're still (laughs) like when i saw him on monday and said what's up it was like talking to somebody who just lost a relative that's what i'm saying like, i know that sounds ridiculous brutal. it does sound silly and i know there's some people laughing like, and i felt bad because i did start laughing immediately because i'm <laughs> that, like i'm like i i have no saying. other reaction to this because you are like it was somebody trying to keep their chin up after yes. losing a loved one At, it was wild. i i know it sounds silly and i wish i wasn't this way 
but that is what it feels like. It's like it's like you are it's like you're uh you you're visiting like you're it's like you're visiting your someone at like a old folks home every day. You like make friends with you work at like an old folks home and you make friends with somebody and they're sick and they're not doing well and then all of a sudden they they finally are doing well and you think they're going to like get out and go home and then one day you show up and the bed's empty and the doctor's like, "Oh, they're dead. They're gone." And you're just like, "What?" We were best friends. We played like chess every day and he gave me fucking little butterscotches or whatever the fuck old people do. And it's just like, poof, it's gone. This thing that you like made your life better or worse or whatever, emotional for like six straight months and meant, you know, like I said, to me, it meant something about my reputation and my life and to Pavs, it might have meant something else. And to the old people, they want to just see it before they die. And it represents like ah, the things I didn't things I never got to do in life or whatever sports always kind of means something bigger or more whether or not you realize it and then so when it's when it goes bad it's fucking it's not it is no joke it's like holy shit like that was a I never reacted that way about a sports team never once was like ever actually really emotionally affected other than like fuck this sucks I'm gonna talk shit and I gotta hear it this was like a you know, no matter what else the other teams do, Yankee fans or whoever else I'm like fighting with, this was like a I need to you know fill this void or like fill this hole or whatever it may be, and and I I like that this dude wrote this book about his dogs, and I think there was enough dog owners and enough people, and he had enough clout and talent as this amazing poet that it came out as this like eloquent you know way to grieve something that other people think isn't worthy of your grief and how you know you're gonna you're gonna encounter people who don't don't care about it at all or they they do and they you know care about it for a second and then move on and expect you to also and you know maybe he maybe he's a sports fan and he can go through it along with his dogs and and articulate it better than i can but there needs to be you know if you're a sports fan out there who reacts the way i did and thinks that it's you're surprised by it or shocked by it or you you're struggling with it like it you're not alone man there are a lot of other people out there and i think that nobody a lot of people won't say it because it is embarrassing or you do feel silly i do it because it's like the job and part of it is showing that emotion and showing all the fans you know how much of a fan you are so that you all kind of connect but the the average fan isn't going to go into a regular day of work and be like crying their eyes out because then you're in a corporate world it's like shut the fuck up and go make me my money here it's like you know pavs was like i i I don't know what to do i have to leave my apartment i can't be around my roommates they're going to be like terrible to me i've lost friends over text messaging right now i I need to like go home and be with my family the same way that you would like when when something bad in your life happens it's Uh, it is i definitely like i went through this but i luckily went through it when i was younger it was like sixth or fifth sixth and seventh grade so fifth grade but that you're, that, you're supposed to right that, like, but that was like oh three the cubs having that fucking uh, collapse like brutal. and then find out moises Salou pissed on his hands and <laughs> being in a town <laughs> where you have that crosstown rivalry mm-hmm. makes it so much oh, worse because everything. half the class is just going to berate you yes especially like i that was i had just transferred to like we had moved so the only thing i had to connect with other kids was the Sports. Cubs. Yeah. So I was like kind of being a loudmouth about it. So in 05, when the fucking White Sox, I'm talking shit the entire year. Yeah. And they made it look fucking easy. Like danced. Yeah. Like tiptoed to the fucking and to the World the Series. the entire time, I'm like, oh, they're going to blow it. They're going to mm-hmm. blow it. Just talking shit. And then having to go in. I, I, oh, I, I, mean, I don't remember. I probably did take a day off. Like, bro, I, I, I have did. absolutely. I've taken. I, uh, I've done it in the past with, with the Yankees. That's another thing. In New York, I'm happy you said that because in other towns you lose and everybody's sad together yeah. and it's whatever. Here you lose and the majority of the town is kicking you while you're down and talking shit. And that's also part of it. Like I was born in the Bronx. I grew up around pretty much my whole life. I just knew my mom and my brother and the occasional like one or two other Mets fans. Every Buddy else I knew yeah. was a Yankee fan. My friends, my enemies, girlfriends, teachers, uh, bosses, coworkers, everybody was a Yankee That's, fan. I'm so, a Southside Cubs fan. Like, so you're, which you're I stuck. did not realize how 
rare that was until I went to a bigger school because I originally went to like this little uh, Catholic school that there was Small eight classes. people in my class at yeah, one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went to one where it was like there's 200 people in like this half of the grade. And there's like four of you total, right? It's yeah, like, there there were not many. And yeah. it was like, oh, shit. This and, is but even thing. that is like, you know, I mean, for me, my whole life has been this like uphill battle of like, fuck these people. And one day, like, I'm I'm gonna get yeah. it, and and there you know the situation is gonna be reversed, and you know we're pushing four decades, and it hasn't happened yet, and so that that starts to be part of it too, where you're like, will this fucking ever happen? But what you're talking about also is I think more acceptable, you know, like you're a 13 year old kid, 12 yeah. year old kid, you're trying to find friends, you're going through puberty, you're trying to find your way, you're already over emotional to begin with, and then you're getting bullied and you're fighting and the good thing happens and you're excited but then the bad thing happens and you're crushed and you go home and you cry and oh, your mom but, but tells you it's going to be okay don't get me wrong there's people that like at this company i didn't like because when i first came here it was the cubs going in 2016 27 yeah, 2017 it was one when big cat hurt his back and was watching from and a guy came up to me it was just my first day i happened to be wearing cubs i wasn't watching whatever game uh-huh. and he was just a snide asshole and was like Oh, oh! How, how's the score? How's that going? And yeah. I'm like shy, nervous, fuck like, you. and I'm just immediately like, "Oh, I get what kind of person you are." Yeah, and they're no longer here, so fuck them. But uh, I, I mean, like, even up to this day, even though I don't watch sports, I still get that. Yeah, like, and, in, and that when means... you guys kicked us out in fucking twenty, I missed fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah. That fucking that was oh. brutal. Oh my god, that was and that was the highest I've in. ever been. Yeah, you know. And then the next year, the pure ecstasy of winning, like I was able to finally step back and be like, "All right, I don't have to be a psychopath." That's the thing. Anymore. I just want to get one yeah. so I can stop because it is weird and it is over the top, but it does it does become and 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 then like I said, when you're a kid, it's it's just as silly, but it's a little more acceptable. When you're an adult, it's hard to be like. I'm crying over the Mets, yeah. but it's it's the same thing as you know there's somebody being like, oh like okay you lost your dog like whatever man like it happens just like keep it keep it moving, but the people who have that everyday connection with that thing or that pet or that whatever, it's um you know I would I would venture to guess that like if you looked at my brain waves or your emotions and your uh, chemicals and shit going on inside it would all fire. And look the oh, same definitely. way as somebody going through like what we call like actual tragedy. Yeah. So it's it's for anybody out there who's going through it, feels ridiculous because of it, knows it's kind of ridiculous, but also can't seem to stop themselves from feeling it. You're not alone. I got you. There's a lot of us out there. Whether or not you admit it, you know, whether or not you can openly say it. Some of us are in a job where you can, some of us can't, but just know it's not that crazy and you're not you're not alone that there are people out there feeling the same way. And come on back next year because we'll do this all over again and over and over again until you're fucking dead because there's no such thing. Sleep is not an escape. Sleep is just a a, a Band-Aid on a gunshot. Sleep is just a a quick reprieve. Until you feel the sweet release of death, we'll do this forever and ever. See you tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to KFC Radio on YouTube to get all the video content. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, and make sure you turn on the bell notifications so you know whenever new video content drops. I want to say something, but the video has to be fast, so that's it.